Hi, it's Ginger and welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Copycat Quilter. Have you ever looked at a piece of ugly wallpaper and thought, hey, I could make a quilt like that? Well, you know, my brain kind of works that way. And recently we were on a trip and I saw this ugly wallpaper and I thought, you know, I bet I can make a quilt out of that. So stay tuned. I'll show you how I figured out what the quilt was supposed to look like. And then at the end of the video, I'll tell you how I reinvented the wheel on this quilt. So stick around. We traveled recently to West Virginia and stayed at a very nice Hilton uh, Home Two Suites. And this was the wallpaper in the bathroom. I should have taken a picture of it with some scale uh, so you could see. It was a pretty big pattern, probably like at least four or five inches on each of those squares. And I just thought it was really ugly, but interesting because I was looking at it trying to figure out where's the blocks. You know, that's the way my brain works. I saw a repetitive pattern and I started looking for where's the repetition or where are the main pieces. And then immediately my head goes to how can I make a quilt like this? So, I mean, I can see obviously there's these white, whatever, rocket ship kind of things. And then there's also the dark rocket ship things. But it took me a while to figure out how I could make those into blocks, where, where the dividing lines might be that I could make straight blocks with. So the first thing I did was start looking for some lines and divisions, and I found, okay, here's a line straight across that goes under all of those white squares, and here's a line that goes under all of the dark squares. So I started seeing, you know, there's rows here of dark squares and then something else. When I started looking for vertical lines, those are pretty easy to see too. You know, there is a white square, like here, this is a white square. So I started seeing these columns. I started drawing these columns, and pretty quickly it shows up that I have light squares, and I have dark squares. And they are not in the same columns. So there's always a column of darks and a column of lights. So it looks like the square that I need to figure out are these, these pieces in between. If I look at this first one, I can see it's basically a half square triangle. And then it has other triangles on the ends. One reason I think it was a little difficult to figure out just looking at it is because this triangle and this triangle looks like it's part of this square. And then these look like the legs from that square. So it's almost like little rocket ships or little aliens or something. So I think this one was kind of hard to figure out visually is that some of the same color pieces protrude from the row or the block they're in into the other one. And, you know, that's kind of all quilt patterns are anyway, is if you're looking at blocks, how they interact between each other, this makes it look like it's coming from the other block. So I have this half square triangle but they're divided up into dark and light sections on each one. So I can draw this out. And draw it as a half square triangle. And then I can put those little corners on it. Looking at this picture, you can see that like the shapes are pretty rounded. They're not points. And so when I was looking at this block, I was having a hard time figuring out if those two main stripes down the middle were the same size or smaller than the stripes at the corner. Whenever I made up a test block, I think it looked a little better when the corners were just slightly smaller than the big strips. This is a light, and this is a light, and this is a dark, and this is a dark. That's this first block here. And I can see that the block below it in this column is the same pattern with the light and darks, and it repeats over and over again. For the column with the lights in it, I'm going to need a light corner in the lower left corner. So I'm just going to write that out, light corner, lower left. So let's look at one of the dark columns. On this one, here I have the block that's 
the dark block and then the one below it with the pattern, the half square triangle block. And if I look at it, it is also dark stripe and a dark corner and then a light stripe and a light corner. So the only thing that's really different about that block is the position of the lights and the darks. Dark in the corner and a dark stripe and light in the corner and a light stripe. But it's the same as that square above, it's just rotated. And if I go all the way down that column, I can see it's just repeated over and over. So I think there's only two blocks in this entire wallpaper slash quilt. On the dark column, I'm going to have a dark corner in the lower left. Now the reason I wanted to write this out for myself, those little notes about the dark corner, when I started laying out some of my sample blocks, I was testing how to make the blocks, I got so confused on how to arrange them and I kept pulling up this picture and trying to look at it and it was just really hard in my head. So since I sat here and did it with a pencil, I'm going to make myself a note that on the dark columns, the columns that have the dark squares, the dark corner is going to go in the lower left. And then on the columns that have light squares, the light corner is going to be in the lower left. So here's the quilt I made from the ugly wallpaper pattern. You know, I had called it robots or aliens. And then whenever I made it and I made it with that green fabric, now it looks like frogs swimming one direction to me. So I thought the quilt turned out really cute. I made really big squares because I was making the quilt for charity and you know, the big squares make the quilt faster. If you made it much smaller, you'd really get that great effect of those shapes. But my lovely daughter, who was in the isosceles triangle video, looked at the quilt and went, oh, that's a pretty herringbone pattern. And I was like, <laughs> yes, it is a herringbone pattern. I don't know why I didn't see it that way to start with, but I didn't. So I was like, hmm, let me Google and see what I can find about herringbone quilt patterns. And guess what? Jenny at Missouri Star Company has a fantastic video all about how to make this exact shape quilt um, using strip piecing and certain rulers. And I will put the link to that in the description below so you can go see all of the cutting and assembling instructions. I made my quilt, I promise before I saw Jenny's video. So I reinvented the wheel. But maybe you learned something watching how I drew the lines and figured out the shapes and everything. And I like this quilt a lot, so I may end up making it smaller. Before you think you got away without me mentioning the word Aki quilt, guess what? When I was working on how to figure out this quilt, you know I don't like to cut with my rotary cutter any more than I have to. And I found that I could use the square, which is the number one in the mix and match cube system. So I could use that to cut my squares. And if I take this shape, cut those middle stripes, and I take this shape, it cuts two triangles at once, and cut my little corner pieces, it's similar to if I took a half square triangle and snowballed the corner. So I used the five, the 16, and the one pieces from Mackie Quilt from the cubes in order to cut the pieces for this quilt. Jenny shows you some really great instructions on how to do the rotary cutting. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you don't mind that I showed you how to reinvent the wheel. I can't decide if I want to call this quilt the ugly wallpaper quilt, or reinventing the wheel quilt, or maybe just frogs swimming in green algae. <laughs> so let me know what you think I should call it in the comments below, and I hope you like and subscribe and share with any of your friends. I always try to show you the videos where I screw up too because we're all human, and it still made a really cute little quilt, and if I want to make it again, I may follow Jenny's instructions on the strip piecing, or I may try to make a smaller version using my cube system. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you come back soon.